One of the cooler innovations in technology, much less games, is machine learning. But how do you get into it and what actually is machine learning? Well, with AWS, we've come up with Deep Racer League, which is a fun and innovative way to sort of get familiar with the principles and the ideas behind machine learning while playing a game of racing. I've got DeClerc Wenzel here from the AWS team. Hey, Conant, nice to meet you. So tell me a little bit about like the ideas and principles behind machine learning, and then we can kind of talk about how Deep Racer is both a fun way to play with race cars, which you all enjoy, but at the same time, uh, get some ideas for how this reward loop thing works. Okay, great. So what we've tried to do here is essentially introduce developers to a concept called reinforcement learning. Now, reinforcement learning is a method of machine learning. So in machine learning, we've got typically supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And all machine learning really is, is it's interested in creating a mathematical model or a statistical model to try and predict something. So for reinforcement learning, and especially in our application to the car, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a model that when it sees an image of a track, it can tell our agent, being the car, what action it should take. So in other words, how should it drive? Should it drive fast, slow, turn left, turn right? Essentially, the actions needed to complete a racetrack. So if I understand correctly, what you're telling me is this, while it looks like a cool race car, is actually a set of data points and a receiving and sending that device that's like feeding back into a system that's modeling everything. Well, actually, all of the training happens in the cloud. So the developers get started, they will log on to the AWS console, go into the deep racer service, and then they would start training a model. So in creating a reinforcement learning model, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. So reinforcement learning sort of centers on this idea. We want to create a model that um, learns by being rewarded. So think about it like this way. If you had to train a dog to jump through a hoop, how would you do it? You would use rewards. So simply put, when you want to train a reinforcement learning model, you actually need to provide that reward function that tells the car when its behavior is good and when its behavior is not good. So in our console, we essentially provide you with that ability. You will go and you can create Yeah, let's take a look at that because what's curious to me is this is not a dog that doesn't want treats. No. So how do we reward the, pro what's the reward loop for a program look like such that it decides, oh, that's a good behavior, I want to do more. Okay. So if you think about a, a reward loop, what should that look like? Um, the way reinforcement learning essentially takes place is it doesn't need a lot of data. You can create a simulated environment in which you can let the car explore the world, but what you need to do is you need to tell it when an action was a good action or a bad action. So programmatically, you will provide a reward function in, in Python syntax that simply put will tell the car, I think if you stay close to the center line of the track, that's something that I really want to reward you for, and if you go off track, that's something that I really don't like. So I want to penalize you for that. So who knew, who knew that Python could be so caring? Yeah, interestingly enough, it is. But it's all up to you. And this is really what is the driving behavior that you want to incentivize. So let's maybe create a test model here. Um, I'm just going to go test model. And uh, if we look through the console, we essentially have an option where you can select a number of tracks that we've provided. And these are just what is the virtual environment that will be spun up and this will be used to race your car on. And so we've selected a, the simple first track and now we get to the reward function. So in reinforcement learning, there are a couple of levers you want to pull to try and create that, that model that you think will work best. And uh, we've abstracted away a lot of the technicalities and, and these levers we feel are the, really the ones that get you the outcome you need. So, the first one is that reward function we just spoke about. You can provide basic code, which essentially tells your car, um, in this example, we try and reward it for staying closer, pardon me, staying closer to the center of the track. So from a programming point of view, you can provide if logic to just say, if you are closer to the center of the track, give a higher reward. If you are further away from the center of the track, give a lower reward. And that's as simple as that really in terms of a very basic, basic reward function. You can get very complex. So on our, in our virtual environment, we've provided waypoints. You can try and calculate what are the angles between different waypoints. What is the angle of my car? How does it relate to that? You can provide additional sort of rewards if it actually is performing well by scaling the reward. Let's say it's pointing in the right direction. 
you can penalize it if it if it's facing the other way or if it you know makes uh, makes a mistake goes off track um, <clears throat> And it's this tuning then that becomes the sort of uh, engineering of the race side for the teams that are competing, right? It's like, how well can I make a uh, set of rewards that get my car going around the track in the most optimal way? Essentially, yes. So the whole purpose of this is you build a model, you train it, evaluate it in the console to see how well it does, maybe put it on your car, take it for a loop around the track, and actually see how well does your model perform. You then need to come back into the console and see, well, you know, I, I notice that my car actually goes off track quite a bit at a specific turn. And it could be that your specific incentive is not correct. And then you would need to start tweaking your model. And tweaking your model doesn't only have to be tweaking your reward function. You can also tweak some of the other um, settings that we provide, such as what are the hyperparameters that you use to train. Now, I don't want to go into these, but Specifically from a machine learning point of view, we have algorithms running in the background that control how do we build this model, how do we update it. And in the hyperparameters, this is where you would see all of these settings, like for example, batch size, like yeah. what, what portion of the data should be used to update our network. Um, things like epics, which is how many times do we run through all our data when we update the network. Things like learning rate. How big do we want those updates to be on our weights in our network? So a lot of features for you to really tweak and play with. And then obviously we have the action space. So <coughs> when the car starts learning initially, um, it needs to select a action from an action space. And you basically need to tell the car in your available set of actions that you can do, how fast can you go and how much can you turn? <laughs> so it's a simple- Let's let them go as fast as they can. <laughs> well, Clearly, everybody is going to like just you know gun the throttle and go as fast as they can. But the risk is, if you approach a hairpin too fast, like you know oh, yeah, physics yeah. would have it that you're going to go off track. So you obviously need to incentivize the car that when it when it approaches a corner, is it really the best thing to get a reward to go as fast as possible? I mean, if you've done a driving course, then it kind of makes sense to try and maybe stay on the outside, see if you can hit the apex and accelerate out of the turn. So. It's so we're already getting sophisticated. Awesome. We're getting sophisticated racing. I guess this is why, you know, if you've been watching this already at home, there's already been some great competition around the globe in these in these uh, deep racer leagues. So if people are interested now that they're watching this, they want to get engaged, where should they go? How would you recommend that they get involved in the uh, deep racer league? So for the league itself, what I would say is go into the deep racer service um, and you can get started, you can train a model. If you want more info on the league, you can go to www.deepracerleague.com and that'll give you all the information in terms of where you can take part in person at selected AWS summits. And it will also give you details of all the competitions we're gonna have virtually run from the Deep Racer service in the AWS console. That's awesome, the clerk. Thanks so much. Great demo, guys. Deep Racer. You, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this, and if you want to get engaged in machine learning, it's one of the uh, easiest and most fun ways to do that. But hold on, we've got a lot more to check out, so let's get on to our next kiosk here at the Game Tech booth at GDC.